Hi everyone, today I'm going to give a short lecture on mini lessons. In this lecture I'm going to talk about where mini lessons came from, what they are, what they need to include, how to come up with ideas for mini lessons, and how they fit into the larger curriculum. Just to give you a little history about mini lessons, they were first introduced by Lucy Calkins back in the 90s as part of the whole language movement, and then later they were taken up by other proponents of writing process pedagogies like Nancy Atwell and Donald Graves. These mini lessons were a response to critiques that whole language did not attend to the conventional aspects of writing, and they provided a systematic and explicit method for incorporating direct grammar and strategy instruction into the ongoing writing curriculum. Mini lessons live up to their name. They are very small lessons that you can teach quickly and easily in a very short period of time. They address one specific concept. So for instance, rather than dealing with all of the ways you could use commas, they might look at just commas in a list and focus very specifically on that type of comma usage. They're typically five to 10 minutes long, so they're really not a whole class period. They're a, maybe a very short piece at the beginning or in the middle of a class. They can be done with individuals, small groups, or whole classes, depending on the topic that you're teaching. And ultimately, they really need to tie into ongoing reading and writing instruction. So these should be deeply grounded in the ongoing reading and writing that your students are doing. There are six major parts that you need to think about when planning a mini lesson, or any lesson for that matter. The first is your introduction. For this, you need to think about how you in will engage your students with the topic. For grammar-related topics, you really want to think about how you can explain the concept in a clear and age-appropriate way for your students. The second step is teacher modeling. For this step, you will demonstrate for your students how the concept actually works. Third, you need to give students a chance for guided practice. This is where they try to work through applying a concept with your and their classmates' help. And finally, you need to give students a chance to engage in independent practice. This is where students get a chance to try to apply the concept on their own as individuals. You'll notice that there are two other parts of a mini lesson that have asterisks by them. These are the most crucial parts of mini lessons, but they don't necessarily happen during the mini lesson itself. Transfer asks you to think about how you will follow up on the mini lesson and give students the opportunity to apply the concept in other settings. This is how you actually know if students really get what you taught, if they can use it again in another time, place, or situation. Finally, assessment can happen both during and after the mini lesson. This asks you to think about how you will know what your students actually learned and if you need to re go back and reteach your concept. There are all sorts of places to look for ideas on mini lessons. The first place to always look is in your students' writing, both as individuals and in small groups. You really want to look for patterns in their writing, so things that are recurring over time and across assignments. Another place to look is in your curriculum guide and your textbook if you have one. These will provide developmentally appropriate topics that are expected of certain grade levels. The same is true of state, district, and soon-to-be national standards related to language arts. Finally, some of your students will be able to tell you what they need to work on in their writing. They've had years of teachers telling them that they use a lot of sentence fragments, for example, or a lot of comma splices. So you can build on these insights that they might have about their own writing. So you're probably wondering how you um, can track individual students' writing for many lesson topics. Here's an example of a writing skills record from Mai. She's the student whose um, website page we looked at a couple weeks ago in terms of spelling, but this is actually a writing skills record from a couple weeks um, when Mai was my student. And you can see here that I track a couple different things over time for her. First, I have the date and the title of the piece, so I know when she wrote it and which piece specifically it is if I need to go back to it. I also document what she's doing correctly in her writing. So you can see she's doing things like writing in complete sentences, including detail, elaborating her ideas. She's using punctuation correctly, 
and, and doing all sorts of great things as a writer. And it's really important for us as English teachers to focus on what kids are doing well in addition to what we need to target with them. The third column includes her targeted conventions, and I try to limit this to about one or two per assignment so that I'm not overwhelming kids with all the things that they did wrong in their writing. That can really shut a writer down. So you can see for mine she's very consistent and this goes along with the web, web page that she made as well. So I've documented here that she ha has some ED endings and plural endings that are used a little unconventionally that we can now see that a pattern is starting to emerge. We have these two pieces along with the website that shows that she's struggling a little bit with how these endings work in English. Remember, English is her second language, so this makes perfect sense for her as a learner. So they, these would be great topics for mini lessons for Mai, and actually a number of her classmates had similar um, target conventions at the same time. So I could pull them all together and do a really effective mini lesson that's based on their needs as writers. So I wanted to wrap up today by talking about how mini lessons fit into the big picture. Um, within individual class periods, so typically you have a high school English class that might run anywhere from 45 minutes to, if you have a block schedule, a couple hours. So within an individual class period, many lessons work really well as introductions to new writing projects. Um, you can use them as transitions between activities. They work great at starting off new class periods. So if students get into the routine of we come in every day and we have some sort of targeted mini lesson or instruction that starts off our class, that's a great way to use them. You can also use them during conferences with individuals in small groups. So you might pull a student or a couple students aside and work with them on these mini lessons um, as a small group. The final point I want to leave you with today is that mini lessons really need to be part of ongoing writing and reading activities. So you can't just do a 10 minute lesson on semicolons and expect it to stick with kids. You really need to tie it into their ongoing writing and also point out where semicolons are used by certain authors in their reading and what that does to them as readers and how it affects their audience. So these are things that um, are really critical with mini lesson teaching. It's not about the 10 minute lesson itself, but it's how that 10 minute lesson fits into the larger um, picture as a teacher. So now you're going to look at a mini lesson for first graders that I've designed uh, about ending punctuation, and you're going to use this to look at the pieces of a mini lesson and start to think about designing your own virtual mini lessons.